Ahoy, peoples. So I wanted to go over uh, something that was a bit more challenging for me early on when I was trying to learn how to generate normals. Uh, let's say on a plane to generate the normals going outward from the plane or like along the tangent of a plane. And, uh, you know, if you put down, let's say, the normal node, sure, you can generate out the point normals, but they're kind of more like they're just going up or down based on what the like the vertex is or the, the face area. It's not exactly something that's too easy to like modify. So what I'm gonna do, whoa, that guy is revving the heck out of his out of his uh, neutral. I hope he didn't just slip the clutch to get it into gear. Anyway, well, actually that might have been what he was doing. There's a hill right behind me. So long story short. Um, so I'd like to show you how to do that by exploiting the um, expo uh, the um, extrude node. So I'm going to set up a couple of nodes as though I'm starting to make an HDA, and we'll just convert them over uh, afterwards. So I'm going to I normally start with a null just because it's it's easy to keep things kind of organized underneath the hood. I'm going to do a extrude actually actually first first I'm going to do a Wrangle node because what we need to do is have a base set of points that we can reference to get the attribute back from the extrude. But because I don't know that, I mean, ID is a pretty common um, uh, attribute to use. I'm gonna do temp ID, so we just delete it later. Uh, and then that way it only retains within the HDA itself. So with that in mind, I'm now gonna take the poly extrude, uh, connect it up and just hit distance and some arbitrary amount it really doesn't matter but you notice on the bottom you have a front face that front face you need to remove and the reasoning for that you'll notice uh these are currently the vertex uh normals that are being shown but you notice with it on it uh oh jeez, these crazy crazy cars outside i'm on kind of busy road but they're also going down and out if you were to transfer that back over let me just show you um it will kind of take the the average of that and that's not something all right you know what let's uh we need to make a normal node on this and get that working correctly point normals and yeah okay even there you go you notice that the normals are kind of skewed outward and we don't want that so on the extrude node turn off the back uh the the face itself and then that that way you notice that all of the vertices are facing outward or all the points normal point normals are facing outward so we just connect that back into our attribute copy, uh, put a view on that, and then match by attribute, temp ID, and then we do the attribute name of normal. And now you notice that we have generated normals going out from the, uh, radiating out from our surface, uh, and they look flat and all. So what we're gonna do now, uh, I'm gonna say attribute delete, so we can get rid of that temp ID attribute. Blah, blah, doo -doo, doo -doo. Okay, and then uh, temp ID, and I'm just going to put down output node because that's how to keep things organized without putting a view flag on something and hitting save and then having it being the wrong output flag or the wrong object, the wrong node being viewed. But I'm going to convert it into a subnetwork, and then on that subnetwork, I'm going to right click on it and go to create digital asset. Uh, from here, I'm going to say, for me, for my workflow, I'm going to say it's a pipeline thing, but um, name it whatever you want, uh, generate normal, uh, plain normals, um, and then I'm going to do generate plain normals. So I'm going to hit OK. Oh, come on. I d okay, well, okay, so I generated, I made the node before, and then I decided it'd be a good uh, node to create a video for, so I went in, and then I thought I deleted it altogether, but apparently there's still remnants of it somewhere. Um, so there's going to be uh, two different options that I'd like to also have the node create. Um, one, the first one, is I also want it to create uh, uh, tangent normals. I'm going to say uh, generate tangent normals, uh, and that will be um, like basically the direction uh, that the edge flow is moving on either, let's say, uh, an, a, a curve or on a plane like we currently have. So I'm going to just say that. And then the other thing that I want to be able to do is uh, flip normals, because maybe we want them going inward or flip the tangents the other way. So flip normals. Okay. Hit apply. And so what we're going to do is set up the tangent normals 
as well right now because I think that'd be a cool thing to go over as well. Um, I'm going to go over here, just kind of move it out of the way. And I'm going to do a sweep nude. A sweep node is a interesting way of basically allowing, um, it's kind of moving along the curve, or in this case, the plane, and it sort of figures out the edge flow automatically for you, and it's super easy, super quick to do. Um, so you take your planes, put it into the second input, which is your backbone. And I guess it's expecting a curve, and technically these are curves, but they're closed. So they're, they're a curve, a polygon curve, but they're a plane, you know, that type of thing. The other thing you need to do is create a single point object. I normally just put down a circle, you know, because it's primitive. It really doesn't matter. Um, and then I'm going to set normals, uh, uh, a normal on it. And I I don't know why. I just default to using the wrangle node because I'm, I don't know, whatever. But this is this is like my go-to for everything. V at N equals uh, zero, zero, 001. You make the normal facing down Z. If you did it with the point node, if feel free or however you want to create the normal just as long as there is a z a down z normal that is created on that primitive um so uh on the sweep node you'll notice that it goes around the outside of the curve you see all of the all the circles are like kind of trying to adopt the the edge flow which is pretty cool so now how do we get the off of the circles here um and again i keep going to the wrangle nodes because i that's just what i'm used to uh, it doesn't really matter I'll, I'll show you how to do it with the point node as well but um what we want to do is get it get the normals off of the sweep node so i'm gonna say v at n equals point one n and the pt num uh now there you, there is another method that you could do in vex also you know this is houdini you can do something like 15 different ways and it's super easy to do so let me just show you how to do it with the uh point node as well just in case you're you'd like to um so on the point node what i normally do uh the attribute that you want to change is your normal and then on the expression, I always just go to uh, second input point position and then just change it over to N because, you know, you could type in at app input one underscore N. You can type that out or just go to position and just change the P to N. And it works. And you notice that all of the tangent normals are generated. Um, and then you compare the two, they're exactly the same. You're good. You're golden. You're, you're dunzo over here. So uh, what I'm going to do is set up a switch node yeah. switch node uh now this switch node is going to switch between the um i guess the in out kind of facing normal where it's going in toward the center of the plane or outward and the tangent so i'm going to right click on our checkbox above on the parameters copy parameter go onto our switch go to right click paste relative reference and now just to double check that it's working if you check the checkbox blam you now switch between tangent normals or the, the perpendicular normals i guess um and then the next thing is that uh again i'm i i i oh, there's a train coming delightful uh again i like going with the whole wrangle methodology um okay the other reason that i do this all right well first v at n times equals negative one that will flip our normals for you so you see where they're facing and then you can notice that they flipped inward um now and then just right click on your uh flip normals and then hit copy parameter now the reason that i like doing it rank with wrangle nodes is, uh, nodes is that i feel like it um it uh, slip of the tongue because it's in my head um i feel like it, it allows me to have a lot more kind of freedom because what if i wanted to take that parameter node and actually set it up to be um be able to rotate around the normal so or, or rotate around the cross product so um, it allows me in the future to not need to remake a node and generate something else. I could just jump in there and be like, okay, I want to add a rotate function into this. You know, it, it, easy enough to do. Um, I'm not going to show you how to do rotating normals here. That's that. I feel like that's a different, uh, a different video entirely. Cause, uh, I, I like doing it through matrices and, and maybe that might be a little bit weird in here. I, maybe having a video just on matrix math might be a cool thing to have because matrix math was also something that was kind of a bit more challenging for me to learn about. Um, okay, so where are we? We're finishing up the node here. Um, I don't normally like having just 
stacked check boxes like this i always like having them lined up across because i i don't know i, I just feel like it's more neat doing it that way so all oh, right when you when you okay when you set up a node uh, a parameter and you're going to copy it and paste it you notice that horizontally join the next parameter also doesn't carry over but the checkbox for the main label will stay off so i'm just going to do another paste and then just move it down so the reason i'm putting in labels you know what here i'm going to show you what it looks like without labels without labels having them side by side will align it on the left and that also doesn't look nice to me because <laughs> i don't know we're in an art field right we're supposed to be making things look pretty right right uh, so what you do is if you put in labels, uh, it'll actually kind of like automatically adjust to the width that it can adjust to. So it ends up filling up the entire space of the row. So doing it uh, like label, option, label, option, label, it will make it lined up. They're all evenly spaced out and they're nice and neat. I don't need to worry about the kind of clumsy looking all the way on the left alignment or stacked alignment. That's just me though. I'm just kind of being a little weird. I'm just going to right click, save node type, even though we already just hit accept and then we're good. Uh, now, just for the sake of it, because I don't know what if something was weird, I'm going to say uh, generate plain normals and I'm going to put it down and see what it looks like. Just to make sure that it like actually loads. It's erroring out because it needs an input and looks like we're good here. Blimp, 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 blimp looks like we're good cool so uh this is the i guess generate plane tangent normals and perpendicular normals um uh you can always expand out on this add a group parameter like whatever you'd like um but uh i just thought it would be a fun little thing to go over because this was something that was kind of annoying for me to figure out when i was first getting into houdini so um uh, if you have any comments thoughts questions uh feel free to leave them down in the comments below anyway uh, have a good day.